Thank you for joining us on Worldwide Slot Car Chat number 42. We are now the answer to life, the universe, and everything. And we have the answers to the life, the universe, and everything related to slot cars among us, I think. Uh, I am your host, Greg Gaub. Got most of our regulars, John Kitt, Martin Dodd, Petrucci, Don Underwood, Jeremy B, Martin John, Phil Carpenter. And looks like we've got uh, several people who aren't using their camera. And I saw uh, David Kale, I'm sure I'm mispronouncing his last name, the owner of uh, Sillage Racing or BLST. He said he was gonna try to come up. So that might be interesting. I might pick his brain for information on his uh, new analog controller. And I'm sure people will have questions about various things that he does. But let's get started with some show and tell. Anybody got anything they wanna show and tell? Speak up or raise your hand. All right, go ahead, Martin. Okay, um, I've just bought this Penelope pit lane um, Honda. It's a 1960s Honda that um, is going to go on. Um, it's it's got a polycarb chassis to go on it. So I had a couple of couple of questions about it. See again. So one of the problems I've got with it is um, I washed it down as normal with a, with any car like this. This is resin. I, I gave it a good wash with a toothbrush and some detergent. And when I put the first coats of undercoat on, I'm, I'm getting those like grease blobs coming up on it. And I, uh, I was just Martin, looking- Martin, are you using, what, what type of paint are you using? Acrylic, enamel, lacquer, what are you using? A acrylic. Yeah. So that means... <laughs> A lot of people say that. So <laughs> I, it, uh, yeah, I'm starting at these grease spots. I've never had it before. And I'm just wondering if there's ways of, of preventing that coming out. Well, it, yeah, what you'll have to try and do is try and get, is, is use some sort of degreaser because obviously, because acrylic is alcohol or water-based. So there might be some remnant petroleum-based product okay. of some sort on it, which is why it's pooling. Yeah. It's not spreading out. So that might be that might be a, a, a good for a first step is to try and get as much of the uh, whether it's you know it, petroleum or organic compound off it as, as possible. That's so why I, I can do something like with, IPA. Yeah, because with the with the casting that I do, um, you really don't need a release agent. The only time you really need a release agent is when you're doing a two part mold and you don't want silicone to to stick to silicone or urethane to stick to urethane. But when you're casting. That's really, it, it's, it's more than, a, than is necessary to put a, 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 a release agent on, on, your, on your mold. So that, that's what I've found because they'll pop out anyway. Um, so I hope that helps. That's great, thank you. Yeah, and uh, I was gonna ask then about um, painting the engine, but I mean, we've come in a little bit late. It's, it's excellent. Uh, actually, I've masked it up. Let me just take this off. The, the detail on this Penelope pit lane kit is absolutely fantastic. If I can get it off. Uh, things like, you know, how do I get the engine color right and yeah, the balance, color balance, and this is crap on this camera, I apologize. And, you know, how to get those beautiful uh, white gray pipes. So uh, you'll know, be asking questions about that a bit later. Yeah, again, um, do as much detail as you can and then uh, experiment with a little bit of a wash, especially on the uh, cylinder heads and everything yeah. will just come to life. It'll be just gorgeous. Yeah. Okay, it's brilliant. Thank you. That's, that's my questions for the show and tell. All right, well, thank you for that. And I'm sure you'll bring that topic up in a future show and we'll have more questions and things to see. Uh, does anybody else have anything they want to show and tell or any topics they want to ask about before I delve in? All right, go ahead, Jeremy, what you got there? Well, I know you like uh, blue and yellow cars. So we're in the ah. middle, of, uh, middle of rally season over here. And I've got this car to try and beat Alan. <laughs> at some point over the year. So it's a SR, SR, SRC, Peugeot, Pikes Peak. Um, that, yeah, very that, nice rally car. That, and it's that went yellow. crazy. <laughs> I was going to say, when you said Pikes Peak, it made it made a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Nicely detailed, fully suspensioned. Is it yeah. uh, spring suspension? Or? Yeah, four springs. Yeah, kind of like a Ninko. Four wheel drive. Yeah, it's a very similar setup to the Ninko um, car they used to do their rally car. Very good car. Um, probably, this is, yeah. this is the Chrono version, sort of low detail. Quicker, but some of the racing chassis flies a bit quicker, but 
Um, now they've changed the rally rules. Anything could be couldn't it? Is that does that one use a, a, a dual axle motor or a rubber band? No, it's um band. yeah, it's got a couple of pulleys on either end, Greg. I don't think the tooth on it is standard. Uh, I think it's just a band. Um, obviously, if you want proper four wheel drive, you need to put the um a tooth belt on it. Yeah, I was gonna say I, I, tooth tooth belts are fairly uncommon, you know. As far as I'm aware, most of them are going to be just the the, the O rings or rubber bands. Yeah. Um, Slot it yeah, for the tooth belt. Various companies that can do um, tooth belts. You often get proper drives. Obviously, the trouble with the belts is they're always slick, um, so you're not getting full full wheel drive. Yep. But no, very good car. I've got a couple of them. Mm. Um, mates just bought one. I sh um, showed him a link the other day, and um, he was watching one that went for eight uh, seven. I think it's seven quid, I think it was December 7th. Well, I want 50 quid by it now off eBay. So, yeah, if you want one, <laughs> it's been used, but you know, you're going to rip it to bits and rebuild it. So it doesn't really matter, does it? So. <laughs> well, thanks for sharing that one, Jeremy. Does anybody else have anything you want to show? John, go ahead. Actually, it's, it's just uh, something that I actually posted, uh, I guess, on my. YouTube channel, if I can, if I can share, of course, at least one of one of the cars, anyway. Um, here, let me just get to sharing here. Share screen. Uh, here we go, and share. There we go. So it's um, a Brabham uh, BT11, and I actually kind of forgot that I had these. <laughs> Zoom in a little bit. Started... Was that sorry? Zoom in a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, let me just zoom in a little bit. Sorry, hang on. Uh, is that better? It must be. Oh, oh hang on. <laughs> somebody, somebody, I got to admit someone first, and then it just kicked me out of Zoom. Hang on. Coming back into Zoom. Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, come on. Really? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Move on. Move on. Oh, oh yeah. There we go. How's oh, that? Okay. There you go. That's good. Yeah. So, um, and it's, it's, I guess I start off with um, BWA brackets on, on this one, and then uh, they're put together with brass. Uh, uh, it's a brass rod, actually, one on one on each side. And I'll just go through here. That's kind of what they start off to look like. And then I started working on the front suspension. Let me, just, I'll zoom in on the on the best picture here. So I, again, because the Brabham had that sort of one piece across the top as the uh, the top link. And, and that's kind of, and, and actually it's the, the suspension that's going to hold the body to the chassis, believe it or not, which is what I did for my, my low tie and, um, and Ferrari. Cool. And I'll just go through it here. And then as you keep building, there you go. You've got the, the shocks uh -huh. and the springs, but the shocks, I haven't, I haven't elongated the shocks yet. Um, they're, they're to be elongated. Um, and then that's what it's going to look like on the car. And now the, the body is actually a, an Atlas uh, body that's actually been, been uh, I guess, scale corrected. So there's a big strip out of the middle that's been taken and then I, um, I cast it as well. And the interior will be removed as well as the, the, the back to, uh, to do cars from, uh, see there's the original. Then you can see how, how wide it is. I mean, it, it's a very wide car because of the, the motor that was, oops, let me just bring this up for you here. Because the motor was really quite large. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, that's kind of what they ended up looking like. It Because the, the car originally was a, an F2 car, very, very tiny. So that's, uh, that's, that's, that's- I just tried to call it a BT3, but it looks more like a BT7, doesn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. It's the Atlas uh, BT7. Yeah, although, although I'm gonna, I, I've, ch I've chopped the, the back off to try and make it look like a BT11 because it really wasn't that much difference externally. So there you go. Very cool. Can you still get those BWA brackets, or is that out of old stock? Uh, I uh, okay. Well, you know, this is where hoarding can come in handy. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I have a, a few of them understated because my wife will probably watch this and I don't want to. <laughs> I can't help you with the front end, but if anybody wants brackets for the, for the FF motors at the back, I can, I can, I make those. Oh, fantastic. Because so you know, it's, it's great. Cause they, they, they bolt right in, mm -hmm. uh, right in the back uh, in there. They're awesome. I mean, 
The, the only thing I would have done in retrospect, because I've already soldered this up, is to use steel instead of brass next time. For the rails or for the brackets? For the rails. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I unfortunately... Although, John, there's, there's something else, too. If you don't want to use brass, yeah. uh, meaning if you don't want to use the brass that you buy in the K&S stands in the hobby stores or the hardware store, go to a welding supply sh store and buy what's called low-fuming bronze brazing rod. Ooh, okay. And it is a, it, it's a, a stiffer version of the brass rod that we use. Uh, you have to be very careful if you bend it. You can bend it about 90 degrees. If you try and bend it any more than that, it cracks. Um, but uh, as, as a material for uh, chassis rails, it's much better than the regular brass because the regular brass is very soft. Oh, okay. Because I, I, I did a Lotus, I, I did, I'm doing two, two Brabham's and two Lotai from, uh, and, and they're, Going to be on the grid at, at Spa in 65. So the Lotus is uh, low tie Lotus is what is, what is the plural of Lotus anyway? Um, I, I actually built um, the, the rear bracket totally from brass stock. Um, in fact, I, if you like, I can try and show those as well. Uh, one, 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 one moment here. Oh, oh, screen sharing. Okay, uh, let me just let me just grab that. It, it just take me a, a second. Sorry about this, folks. Talk well, while he's talk. doing that, Dennis, what was the exact name of that brazen rod? Low fuming bronze. Oh, low fuming. Okay. Low fuming bronze. Nice. So, it, and it's it's used for what? Does anyone really do any brazing? Is was it for was it for brazing, Dennis? For brazing, yeah. Yeah. Lots oh, of people. Okay. Lots of people still do brazing. You buy it by really? the pound. You buy it by the pound. It's a it's one sixteenth diameter. You can actually get three thirty seconds diameter as well. Um, it's pretty straight. Uh, you need to clean it up quite well with scotch Bright or something before you solder it. It solders fine as long as you use acid flux, uh, but um, it is a good deal stiffer uh, than regular K&S brass rod. Ah, okay. Okay. Oh, shoot. You know what? I don't know if I've got it. Hang, hang on. Just get one, 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 one with color. Maybe I put it somewhere else. Hang on a second. Oh, jeez. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, if you want, I can find you. If someone else wants to show something and, and come back to me, I'll, 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 let's do that. How about that? Keep, keep Does the... anybody else have anything they want to show and tell? Well, I'm, I'm looking for my pictures of my brackets, but you know, that'll take me a minute. Okay, so it's a race between John and Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I think I'm going to lose. I, I'm kind of curious. I want to ask Mike and Wayne now that he's now that he just joined. Wayne Lander just joined. Last week, those guys were still chatting for like <laughs> two hours after. I'm like done with my dinner. We finished watching a show. I look over the computer. They're still chatting. What in the world did you guys talk about? Like everything or what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were talking about slot cars and doing... He has an interesting... Um, formula for building cars and we were talking about going magless and stuff and and it was it was quite an interesting conversation and it was it was like two or two thirty in the morning in england when when i talked to him so it was crazy but it was great fun really really had I mean, a good time time flies you know when you're when when you're just having a great conversation and you're both you know asking and talking and telling and asking and stuff it just it just goes by and you're like what that was two hours so i'm not yeah. surprised it's just funny when you look over i'm like there's nobody else there just those two guys are still talking <laughs> <slot cars." laughs> I had to facilitate i'm happy to facilitate i just oh, I was, loved this, it. Was, was this me we're referring to yeah, yeah you're like correct. To me. <laughs> <laughs> good evening fellas i've only just joined in <laughs> All yeah, right, that's I found, a, I found in, a picture. Uh, I guess I got ahead of John. Oh yeah, go for it. Go for it, Dennis. Go ahead, Dennis. Um, yeah, yeah, Wayne, when you joined in, that's what reminded me about your long conversation with Mike. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, by the way, Mike, that secret, that's uh, that that formula. Keep that to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Can, can you guys see that? <laughs> that's, that's the bracket you make, Dennis. That's the bracket that I make. Um, it's, it's as wide as the little FF motors. Uh, it has just the two screws um, because a lot of the motors only have the two holes. They don't always have four. Uh, 
the, and I can build, I can make them to order with uh, a number of different things. Firstly, uh, the distance from the from the center of the axle to the mounting face is about uh, a half an inch. The, uh, the the size of the hole at the back, I can make those either three sixteenths where you just pop in a, a bushing or a bearing, or I can make them seven thirty twos if you want to put in a piece of of brass tubing that then would take the three sixteenths bearings on the outside. Uh, and I can also put in any kind of offset of the axle to the motor uh, that you would like. So for example, most of them are built with zero offset where the, where the center line of the axle holes is the same height as the center line of the motor. But if you wanted, for example, to use uh, the slotted offset gears, I can move this up 40 thousandths a millimeter uh, higher, and then you get that little bit of lower center of gravity. So that's all I can do that uh, because I make them to order. So I can do that for anybody. Awesome. Wow. I make those for uh, for the regular um, uh, FC can, uh, uh, FK can style as well. They're three quarters of an inch wide and they're a little taller, obviously. So uh, anybody wants those, just remember I make them get in touch with me. They're about five bucks a piece. So, so, so Dennis, do you just like solder to the, the sides of them, I guess, or underneath? Is that where usually you have the attachment? Yeah, the, 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 um, the side rails would go along the edge here and right. just be soldered straight onto the edge there. Yeah. Uh, okay. I, you know what? I haven't got my, uh, I haven't got my photos on this computer. I'm so sorry, folks. Yeah, because you, you, you're putting the, you're putting the rail underneath that, right? Yeah. Well, there's a cutout on those yeah. BWA um, brackets for that that fit perfectly. Yeah. Now, mine, mine, you would put on the outside. Gotcha. And if you wanted to put them on the inside, you could cut a little, you could cut a little groove there as well and put them on the inside. I do that on the three quarter wide ones sometimes, right. but. Um, I mean, if, if somebody wants them wider than three quarters, I can build them, I can make them wider as well. Uh, I have a, a, a process all set up, and uh, I know exactly how long the blank piece of brass needs to be uh, to give whatever width of bracket I want. Oh, so, okay. For example, if it's a three quarter inch wide bracket, I know to cut my piece of brass exactly two inches long, and then I punch and I mark and punch and, and drill out all the holes first and then I bend them afterwards and I have a bending break with a with a particular stop on it so that they bend in the same spot every time oh nice if you go on to home racing world uh pl shameless plug go on to home racing world and look in the in the scratch building site in the scratch building area you will find a whole uh, thread that I posted there of the whole process of making them oh okay oh. <laughs> all right so that's me hi guys all right very cool thank you very much dennis we're still on show and tell does anybody have any other show and tell they want to share or go ahead uh alan you're currently muted thank you oh, there you go uh just looking at that src car that was shown earlier as a rally car and i've had this thing for quite a while uh, and I got this uh, kind of a gift at the 2019 Slot Festival. Um, and, you know, when I put it on the track at first, I was not at all impressed. The whole thing just didn't work very well. Um, and the main thing I did to make it work, and just lift the lid on this, is create a space frame. I don't know if you can really see that, but the pod has got a complete space frame around it now. Hmm. So you stiffen the pod, basically. Yeah, the whole thing. Of that same car. Thanks, Alan. Yeah, it's um, yeah, it it absolutely transformed the car. Um, plus gluing the motor in. Um, this is um, uh, an Avant Hurricane motor, which isn't uh, so it's meant to be an angle winder motor, so it's got quite a short uh, shaft on it. But it's glued in, as well as screwed in, and uh, dropped slightly. You can probably see the slight drop, mm, maybe. Looks Maybe like about half a mil at least. Yeah, I'm very keen on doing that when I can, and um, and th but that transformed the whole car. I mean, all of the tramping disappeared, 
all of the uh, jumping around disappeared and the, the whole kind of shakiness of the car just went away. Uh, and this thing now goes like stink. Um, like I said, the motor, it's, uh, it was bought as a, a job lot from China, off eBay. Uh, it, I th it's, I'm pretty sure it's an Avant Hurricane, but they didn't uh, label it as that. Uh, and I bought six for about £10. Got them shipped from China. Sure there at one stage. All the angle winder chassis with those motors. Yeah. And it's a great motor. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. I mean, I can't fault it at all. So it's the only, only regret that I didn't buy more. So if you... Alan, if you, if you sorry, what, up, what is the brace in? What, what material is that? I was going to say, <laughs> did you build that from scratch? This is toothpicks. Ah, oh, right. Toothpicks, epoxy resin, and red Sharpie. <laughs> wow. Nice one, mate. That is so... That is... Oh, what a cool idea. <laughs> and it, yeah. it definitely does the job. It definitely does the job. So that's my show and tell for you guys. That's awesome. You have to maybe get some good pictures and do a tutorial on how to stiffen a pod with toothpicks, resin, and, and <laughs> while, we're, while we're talking SRC, I've got something to go for it. All right. So this is the, uh, let's see if I can do this. Um, it's just so bright here. I'm trying to get can you point the light upwards away from it? Well, I guess if I turn... Is that a Yardley McLaren, is it? This is the Yardley McLaren from SRC. Yeah. Beautiful. How's that? Better? Yep. Yeah, yeah this is the, the Yardley McLaren from SRC. Uh, it's just one of my favorite, favorite liveries. Uh, Danny Holm, of course, one of my more favorite drivers even though he was an, a Kiwi and an All Black. Um, <laughs> you, know, you know what they say, I support, I support South African rugby and anybody playing against New Zealand. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, it's a gorgeous car. And uh, this particular one was one that we were using it at um, uh, Electric Dreams to do a video of unboxing. And the, the, the store manager and his young buddy who were doing the video took the thing apart and couldn't get it back together again. <laughs> so they brought me all the pieces and they said, can you put this back together again? I said, well, if you sell it to me at a discount, I'll put it back together. So you said, okay, we'll give it to you. <laughs> so I, I, got, I brought this home, um, not thinking that it was going to be anything particularly different to any of the, the Fly uh, F1 cars and so on. Uh, but I found out very quickly that it's actually a really nice little car for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, it has decent bronze bushings in the back uh, and uh, slotted gears. Uh, it has a pretty um, stoky little uh, FFO50 motor. Uh, but the big deal is the rear tires. Um, the, the compound is pretty good and for whatever reason, whether it was a, whether it was a mistake or whether it was done purposely, the channel inside the tire that fits over the ridge that's on the wheel, the channel is deeper than the ridge is high. So there's actually an air gap all the way around the inside, which makes the tire very much softer. And of course, what I first first thing I did was I found a little piece of foam, and I stuck it around the wheel, and then I put the and then I put the tire over the top of that and then glued and trued them. So they have a little bit of a foam insert inside that air gap and the traction is really good and the car goes wonderfully. So I know they're expensive, but they're very, very pretty and they're a lot better than I expected in terms of performance. So, so do, you, do you have a car that you can actually drive against it or? I think uh, pretty much any of my, my Fly March uh, 761s uh, will be uh, around the same. Um, it's not as quick, for example, as a as a, a poly car Formula One would be, okay. uh, but it's definitely better than some of the stock flies, particularly on their stock tires. Well, congratulations! You did something that you know people, regardless of scale, have always been told: never buy a car in bits. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, the, the the big deal was if you you know you can't see it there, but in the back, all of the suspension detail. There are these tiny little coil springs that are in there. 
And when they took the thing apart, they weren't watching what they were doing. And the next thing, when they looked on the table, there were little coil springs lying all over the place. Of course, there's two that go in at the back and two that go in at the front. And the front ones, you can't even see unless you actually look right in through in through in there where my finger is, because uh, it's a little vertical inboard spring, the same as the full size car, right? And so uh, that's that was what that was all about. Are the springs yeah. just for show, or are they functional? They're just for show. Yeah, completely okay. for show. Hey Dennis, are those steerable front wheels? Yes, unfortunately. Okay. I, uh, yeah, I was wondering what you guys thought about those. Um, I have them in a couple of my Formula One cars, and uh, they're just more fragile than anything else. Yeah, and the problem with them mostly is that they really all that they do is uh, upset the handling. Um, these ones are a little better than the regular fly ones because they actually pivot. And they have a, they have a little pivoting areas rather than just flexing like the fly ones do. And at some stage, what I might do uh, is to uh, is to disconnect it and just lock the track rod up completely so that it's so that the front wheels stay straight, uh, and then let the guide pivot on its own. That makes but, sense. But quite honestly, right now uh, it's surprisingly good uh, for what it is. Dennis, is there any advantage to sort of making a tie rod and let the, 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 the wheels steer on their own, uh, it, like uh, unconnected to the guide blade? I've seen lots of cars done that way, and I remember building them like that uh, way back in the day. Um, and uh, a friend of mine by the name of John Dilworth in, in England has built a couple like that. Basically a trailing, like a trailing caster, castering wheel yeah. uh, with a, with a with a connection across it, uh, a track rod to, so that it works. Uh, I don't think so. Personally, personally, I think if the if the tires are going to be running on the track, the front wheels, if the if the car is going to be supported by the weight of the front wheels, then they need to be firm and no play or slop there. And I would rather coat the tire and reduce its rolling resistance and its side to side resistance than try and make them steer. It's just a whole lot of extra complexity that I don't think we need. So, so it's it's a hindrance. It's it's not an advantage. I think it's a hindrance. Yes, but it looks cool. You know, Thank you very much for sharing that one, Dennis. Uh, does anybody else have anything you want to show and tell? Mike, you got something you want to show? Yeah. <clears throat> Speaking of Formula Ones. Ah. I've got the uh, the new polycar, and the tires are awful. I can barely get the thing around the track. And there's no question of making this mag mag car because the rear of the chassis is completely um, completely movable, as you can see. So, uh, if anybody's got any ideas for tires for this thing, I'd be appreciated. Yeah, I don't think there's anything available yet because it's a new wheel size. But yeah. as soon as we as soon as we find out what uh, what tires are available, uh, I would think that Slotted or Polycar will come out with a with a twenty two shore tire of some sort for it at some yeah. point. Uh, Mike, and, do you, I was going to say, Mike, do you cast anything yourself? Because casting tires is really not that difficult at all. Uh, no, I don't. What do you normally run? Do you normally run silicones or rubber? Uh, I run urethanes, Paul Paul Gage generally. Okay, so Paul will probably have a tire for it pretty soon. <clears throat> yeah, but that still doesn't help me with the traction. You know, on scale extra, it's it pretty slippery. <laughs> For a person who's not used to non-magnet racing, yes. oh, yeah. Well, you, yeah. know, you know, Greg, the, the issue that I found is that the, the controllers are so touchy. And speaking of those, thank you, Dennis. I've got the controllers, by the way. Oh, great. And they work great. Good. So um, I, I, that actually, that thought came to my mind earlier in that when I was making the SCP-3 video I just posted, the ARC or True Speed or whatever controllers are, are not bad controllers, but when you have a twitchy car, the first thing you want to do is dial it down, right? So if you have like a Sonic controller, you can just turn a knob. For your yeah. ARC Pro, you got to use the throttle curve in the app, or for your APB, you've got to use throttle profiles in the software that you use. I'm assuming that you've already played around with throttle profiles a little bit. Uh, a little bit, but I haven't done it in RCS 64. 
absolutely, absolutely fire up those profiles, buddy, because what I what I have found is that with most magless cars, I want to use uh, what they call L speed, L dot SPD. And basically it just gives you a really smooth run up. So you have a lot of low end control. It, the car doesn't just shoot off when you touch the trigger, but it all, it, but it'll give you full speed when you go full throttle. And okay. so for magless cars, I'm always doing something that has a lot of very low speed at the, at the, for most of your throttle control is at the low end of the speed. And then it quickly ramps up near the, near the top of your, near the trigger pull, full trigger pull, so that on your straightaways, you can get full speed. But when you're right. trying to, when you're trying to baby it around the turn because <clears throat> there's no magnets, it's a lot easier. You got a lot more control and you can go slower. So definitely play with those throttle curves. They're basically, there's, there's like 20 throttle curves built into RCS. Yeah. I, I, I have seen them play them a little bit, but um, they with mag cars, of course, they don't make a lot of difference. Um, yeah, but I, I will make so, an attempt. On so there's four that, that I basically use. L speed, like I just described. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, linear, which is obviously just a straight line. Yeah. Uh, which is, you know, what most, you know, non throttle curve is linear, basically. Right. Uh, then I use H speed, which presumably stands for high speed. I use that for magnet cars because it basically gives you a, gives it, it jumps up quickly and then does more of a linear thing because you, you, you got no low end on the magnet car, right? Because it doesn't right. move until it's until it's gotten beyond the ne the necessary voltage. So with eight speed, you're not wasting half your trigger pull just to get the car to move, and then you still have full blast. So with with the magnet car, I use eight speed, and then depending on the car that I'm driving, I might use a S curve, which is basically kind of come up to a a, a, a low speed but not too fast quickly, and then a slow curve up towards, you know, most of your, most of your trigger pull is going to be kind of in the mid range. And then it jumps up again for your, for your high speed. So, so L speed, H speed, linear, and S curve basically cover all the, all the necessaries and, and all the other ones are basically somewhere in between all of those. So if you're going to play around, play with those four throttle curves and, and I guarantee you will notice a difference. And, Pretty much any time where the, the digital racing club is racing magless cars, which is most of the time, most of the guys prefer the L speed just because it's it makes that low end control so much easier. You're not always buzzing off at the turns because you hit the gas too much because it's so sensitive. Yeah, so Mike, is, I'm sorry. I missed last week. Mike, what, what throttles are we talking about? What you got, like controllers? You got yeah. some two speeds from Good. True speed, okay. True speed for the with the plug-in for uh, the seventy forty two power base. Does yours do the true speed oh. have batteries? Have battery ports? No. Okay, so they're the SSD three, probably. Right. Yeah. M yeah. Mike, have you thought have you thought about just declaring it a wet race and doing your best? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's okay for me, but my buddy doesn't. Uh, does it really work that way? Yeah, I'm <laughs> That's the, the car right now, and there's there's very little space there, and on top of that, there's very little clearance. So if you were going to put a magnet underneath, there's oh. just about no clearance. Yeah, yeah it's uh, I'm by by default I'm using a uh, uh, a magless situation. Yeah, so so maybe that'll force you to do a little bit more experimenting. I yeah. mean, you know, we kind of talked before about you know rubbing tire rubbing oil into the tires. That'll probably help that, you know, whatever that compound is. It, it made the tires sticky, but it didn't make them have traction. <laughs> didn't make them any better. I mean, you no, they didn't have any better traction. Did the oil soak in? Yeah, it, I left it for about three hours. And then you made sure um, put any residual oil on them before you? Yeah, it? yeah, I got some residual oil off. But uh, yeah. yeah, it's it's quite a handful. That C1 we'll compound is a bit of a problem on. I was going to say, I wonder if that's the C compound. It's yeah. the C1 compound. It's what they use for stock, the stock uh -huh. tire all the way through the range. And on the poly store track, maybe, uh, the poly car track, maybe it's okay. Yeah. That's but, uh, <laughs> yeah. Actually, if if uh, uh, Slot had made the, the poly car track with ch uh, lane changers and used the SSD system, I would go for it. I would just. It 
They will yeah. eventually. I'm sure they will. Well, it's not going to be SSD. It'll be it'll be oxygen. Oxygen. But yeah. They're going to make lane changers, and it's going to be oxygen compatible. Depending you on get the. It might be SSD compatible because the technologies are very very similar as far as how the yeah. lane works, but we don't know until they actually talk about them and release them. They've them. made the track converter to Ninko, haven't they? So they can. Yeah, I was going to say, have they got a Skeletrix converter yet? I've, I've got the Ninko converter. I don't know if there is one, but the, the first one to get would be the Ninko one because that allows the system to become digital quite easily. Yeah, I've yeah, got a lot of Professor motor bits. It's becoming the United Nations of slot car tracks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I believe it's, it's also the be... same lane spacing, isn't it? So there's no there's no tapering. So it's, you know there's no change in um, track width. Right. I mean, pretty much any new track system is there. It is going to benefit them to provide conversion pieces. <laughs> <laughs> because nobody, yeah. not a lot of people are going to want to completely trade up, you know, sell all their Ninko or Skelectric or whatever and buy all new tracks. So being able to use both on one the, layout. The other alternative would be to paint it. You know, that's a possibility too. Yep. Yep. But, but it, it also gives the possibility for making some really interesting layouts too. Oh, I've got a couple of those. Yeah, you don't have a lack of layouts or pieces. You're just still working on the best combination of tires and yeah. And I, I've How been able to. You run through it, Mike? What's the voltage you're running at? Um, yeah, well, that's another thought about it is to drop the voltage down with a variable voltage on it. Um, but I'm running stock uh, scale extra voltage. So that's going well, to be a little, be a little high. That's where the power. That's where the throttle curves are going to come in really handy because like yeah. Like you know, and and the the uh, the arc system also has you know like a dozen throttle curves that, that range from you know slow to linear to high and stuff like that. Definitely, definitely play with magic. It. Magic has it fully adjustable. Yeah, even even better with that one. So you can make any yeah. throttle curve you want with that one. So, so Greg, it sounds like mapping a real race car too, the way you'd map a throttle. Oh yeah, that's, that's right. Exactly what it is. Yep. Speaking yeah. of throttles, look who we have here. Mr. David is on. David, I'm sure that I pronounced your last name incorrectly. So please, how do we pronounce your last name correctly? Uh, my last name is Kai. Kai, uh, in, in English, uh, the word who is uh, uh, very close is, for example, uh, by uh, B, uh, um, B uh, double, I, double I. It's the same pronunciation. Kai, works for me. So <laughs> it's very easy. It, 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 it's not it's not easy to uh, to write, but very easy to uh, to say. <laughs> Thanks uh, to uh, um, uh, give me a, a chance to uh, to join uh, your um, uh, your conversation. My English is very 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 poor. <laughs> Well, not, my not, David, not to worry. It, it's it's better than our French. It's okay. <laughs> of course, of course. But my, my best difficulty, in, in, in fact, is to understand. To understand is very very difficult for me. So if um, Greg, uh, uh, I can understand your accent, but uh, if you have not the uh, the Queen. Uh, the English Queen accent is very difficult for me to understand. <laughs> Yay for Americans. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> if, if, if necessary, yeah, if Canadian, for, I'll try for, and for, translate. For very good hour. <laughs> very as, good hour as, for, for us in France. <laughs> as a Canadian, I volunteer to try and translate. <laughs> oh, God. What would you know about translate? <laughs> What's okay, that moving, on, moving on from, from dialects. <laughs> uh, I, I wanted to kind of let David, if he wants to, talk a little bit about uh, his new controller. We've, oh, we've uh, of videos. With, with pleasure, with pleasure. So the controller is here. Uh, it's, uh, um, it's for me uh, just a controller uh, to uh, develop um, a new digital system, uh, a digital system for uh, my customers. So it's not uh, a, a digital system to uh, be uh, uh, to be sell at a lot of uh, of uh, a, a big serial uh, manufacturing. It's just uh, for my my con my um, my con my customers. 
So um, uh, the first idea was to, uh, to develop so a digital system, but to uh, test it, I have just put two, tr uh, two transistors, one for the brake and one for the uh, throttle, and test it in analog mode. OK? OK. And um, I, I take the, um, the shell uh, from uh, TruSpeed, because it's very easy, and uh, Steve is a very, very good guy. So uh, he, um, he sent me uh, all, um, all details to uh, develop my own PCB. And um, my, uh, uh, my mind uh, for uh, the controller was to have a display. It's, it was very important for me, the display. I, I can show you your, your interest. Yes. <laughs> Tell us everything. <laughs> so uh, ah, there you go. Yes, and uh, the display uh, can show directly uh, the curve uh, wow. that you explained just uh, five minutes ago. Uh, when you, you press the button, uh, so it's uh, uh, reverse for me, it's not easy. Uh, you, you can see that the, for example, yeah. this, uh, this, um, this knob is for uh, the minimum speed. The speed uh, uh, for the car when you press the trigger at the first step. Okay, like this, you can adjust uh, the minimum speed. At the end, you can adjust the, the turbo. I, I don't know uh, in, uh, in English, it's okay, turbo. Turbo, it's the last, uh, the last step will be, um, will be... Um, it's the boost. Um, so, uh, the boost, okay, the, uh, yes, yes, the, the boost, v very good, very good. P perhaps I will change the, <laughs> the word. <laughs> I will say boost uh, 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 as a piece of, of turbo. And you can uh, adjust the, uh, like this, it, it's better. You can adjust the curve. You see a curve very, oh, yeah. okay, and like this, you can have a curve with uh, yeah. a, a bum, bum, bum. So, sorry for the word. I have a translator, but uh, it's... No, uh... <laughs> yeah, in, in other technologies, that would be called the, the exponential. So it's either a, either a negative exponential where, it's, where, it, the, where the, the bump is on the, on the uh, slow side, or it's a positive exponential where the bump is on the fast side. So yes. it, it just it determines whether your whether the trigger uh, response uh, is faster at the bottom end of the travel or at the top end of the travel. Uh, so I tend to think nice. of that as aggressive or soft. Yes, yes, yes. aggressive or soft. Yes. Good idea. Yes, yeah. uh, if, if if you turn uh, on positive, uh, yeah. you have very aggressive in the beginning, in the beginning. of the trigger, and. If you have a, a softer uh, a curve like, like this, I, I don't know if you see uh, 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 the curve is very uh, yes. mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. <laughs> uh, you will you you will have uh, a, a, a lot of smooth at the beginning and at the end uh, a, a boost Impressive. effect. Mm -hmm. Okay, and. Excellent. This uh, um, this uh, this mode is for the throttle, but you have when you press one time, you have all uh, effect for a brake system. Wow! So you can adjust the uh, sorry. Yes, we can see like this. So you step you in between two displays with that button, either the brake in display and the throttle and the acceleration display. Yeah, it's two separate menu. displays, is it? Yeah, menu. Yes, yes, they're, 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 they're two, two step because there are only three, uh, three knob 
Yeah. I, I have no place for me uh, for for uh, for uh, I've, uh, I just uh, I just know uh, more. So I I have uh, six parameter parameter. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, I have six parameter, but only three button. So I have to uh, press one time to go for to go like this uh, to uh, throttle and to brake. So brake. If you see, you can adjust the the force of brake. Initial okay. initial amount of braking. Yeah. Break yes, at the beginning. Initial, yes, initial, and after a, APS, APS is the curve of degressive of degressive break. Uh -huh. Okay, wow. like this, you break hard and you go uh, smoother after. Softer. It, it, it's okay, and yes. like this, you break hard. You stay on the on the brake uh, on the brake uh, pedal uh, in a in a real car, and at the end you uh, you you make a degressive a degressive brake. Okay, so okay. it's adjustable like this. So when you have zero uh, zero, you brake hard every time. Mm -hmm. Okay, for one second, uh, uh, about one second. And like this, you break, you break very hard at the beginning and um, uh, release. Uh, release is very uh, a tenth, uh, a, a, a tenth uh, of, uh, of second after you degressive very early. And the last parameter here, okay, is um, uh, ESP. ESP, uh, it's electronic time. stability. Sorry, electronic stability program. Electronic stability, okay. And but uh, in the slot uh, for uh, in slot cars, it's the time uh, the power uh, uh, go to the engine. The delay. The time the power goes to the engine, a delay. The de the delay. Okay, it's. Is that on, that's still on the braking side? Yes. Yes, it, it, it's not. It's not break. It's a uh, re slaughter when you, when you yes. It pulses okay. the basically what it does. It pulses the electricity to the motor. It's a yes. same thing to pulse with a modulated controller. Yes, it doesn't you think it gives. Yes, a, but it, it, it's it's only it, it's, it's only, only a delay. It's only a delay. And um, if you have a zero like this, when you sort of very. Uh, quickly, the the power will go to the car very quickly. Okay, but if you do like this, for example, uh, the the maximum is ten, is uh, just less one, uh, just less than one second. Okay, when you do like this. The power will go to the uh, to the engine. Um, uh, sorry, I, 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 I do with my um, with my mouse. Oh. Yeah, it's <laughs> working as a it's working as a throttle damper. That's right. Okay. So if I, so so if, I can, if I can kind of explain how I understand what we're looking at right now, you have this screen that we're seeing. One knob controls how how hard the brake is as soon as you let go of the fiddle. Yes. Second knob controls how quickly the brakes go down to zero braking or stay at zero. Yeah. With, with, the last, with the curve, with the curve, and, and, the, and the last is controlling the how acceleration the speeds up when you pull the trigger. So if yes. I can make a comparison to a slotted controller, for example, the the last knob is the same as the green knob on a slotted controller. Yes. Yes, uh, on on the on the um, on the uh, ES, ESP two uh, no um, the, oh, oh, oxy, uh, uh, the slotted uh, the slotted uh, controller uh, the last one is uh, is uh, the green yes yeah. uh, the mid uh, the middle break is um, the red yeah. but. Uh, 
uh, on, on a um, static controller, uh, you have uh, the right part uh, with uh, normal break and the left pa uh, part with um, degressive uh, break. Yeah. So uh, on this controller, you can uh, do both uh, differ differently with two two if you take that and compare that to the true speed to the PWM2 controller, then uh, the first knob uh, on this one is the same as their brake knob. Yes. The second yes. one is the same as the release knob, and the yes. third one is, and the third one is the same as the accelerate knob. Okay. Those are the names that true speed use, but the, the concept is the same. But man, this is so clever to put it all into three buttons. And see, wow. the, and see the actual curve on the screen. Yeah, yeah. Yes. The, 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 finally, um, uh, that that there is very difficult to explain when you uh, when you uh, you take a, a, a new controller, uh, you don't understand what knob do, do finally. So with the the, the little display. Uh, you understand very, uh, very uh, quickly uh, what the controller do. I don't say that my controller is better than the other. No, just different. <laughs> yeah. I don't say that because um, my uh, my my customers are not uh, are not um, a slot racer. Uh, they are. Uh, uh, be beginners, or they come from uh, the real racing. So uh, I have to 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 talk to 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 us uh, with a uh, real racing vocabulary. Yep, makes sense. <laughs> how Thank you very much. <laughs> how 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 easy is it to make adjustments while you're racing? For example. Yes, okay. it's, yeah. a very good, it's a very good uh, question. When you are racing, it's impossible to adjust the knob when you drive. It's not possible because you, can, you, you, you can't uh, look at the display and you look at your car. Okay, so uh, finally, uh, how, how can I do? Uh, when you uh, when you restart the controller, if you press the back button, you can adjust the mode. There is four modes. Is it uh, is it understandable? Yes. So the first. The first mode is ghost. So ghost is um, uh, um, how to say uh, single speed, single speed. Yep. Okay. When you when you when you release the, the button, you can adjust like this the uh, single speed of the car. Okay. So to change mode, you press the back button. And you have the kid, the kid, sorry, kid, yes. The kid mode, when you release, uh, the, last, uh, the last knob uh, will, uh, you will adjust the uh, max speed. So uh, if you have a kid or, or a very uh, fast car in a very little track, it's my, uh, it's my case. And uh, you can adjust uh, the, the maximum speed. Like this, you are not with a Formula One on a karting, uh, uh, karting track. So after, oops, sorry. <laughs> uh, you have the, um, oh, the kid practice, the practice mode. It's, it's a mode with uh, the boost at the end. Okay, you see here, okay, the boost. And the last mode, which is very important, um, 
it's the oh sorry the race the race mod uh, I have not uh, the race mod with the race mod you can choose what parameter you will assign to each button okay and you have not uh, you you seen that I press uh, the back button to change. Uh, uh, the, to change the, um, the parameter. Like this, it's direct, okay? For example, I have chosen a uh, break on the, on the last one, and you can adjust break directly, okay? You can, uh, you have boost on the, on the middle one, okay, you adjust, and you choose what, uh, what, uh, uh, what are your uh, three favorite um, parameter? You do like this. It's very easy. You press the controller uh, full, for the trigger full, and you press uh, the back button, the rear button. Sorry, and you can adjust here the parameter on each. Uh, knob. Okay, for example, break for here. After I will boost or minimum speed or curve, like I want. And the the, the end, uh, for example, uh, I don't know uh, ABS. Okay, you release and you have directly the. Um, the, the parameter who is, uh, and like this, you can adjust when you, when you are driving, you can adjust uh, directly and uh, the controller will um, re rebuild the curve, the minimum speed and uh, all uh, parameters. But, wow. but you have only three parameters and not the six. <laughs> for while you're racing yeah but yeah uh, that's but when you are racing you, you have you have just you have already uh, for, for me i know that i use only uh, three parameters i use brake i use minimum speed and i use um, uh, abs and like this i can uh, i can uh, drive uh, every uh, every cars and uh, if I change lanes, I know that uh, uh, there is only these three parameters who uh, I can adjust to, uh, to drive the car. So it's the philosophy of, the, of, uh, of this controller uh, that I will uh, develop on a digital system because my, uh, my speciality is, uh, is the digital and not uh, the analogic. So this, so this controller is is basically your your first step on your progress to your own digital system, more or less. It's um, uh, it, it was uh, it, it, it was um, a, a, a study. A study. It's okay uh, to know what uh, if I if I can build my own controller. <laughs> So I began with a very, very, <laughs> with no curve, with no, uh, and um, uh, it was in, uh, in March in France. Uh, we are, uh, we can we get uh, uh, out of, uh, of the house. And uh, finally, I have only that to do. <laughs> so uh, it, it's, I, I, I wanted to, to, to do something very uh, basic, very simple. And at the end, it's not simple. It's very, uh, <laughs> it's always like this. But with, I, I, I hope I, I, I done something uh, who is understandable. Uh, you know, I, I have, I don't want to compare with other manufacturer, but when I take a Cobra uh, controller with uh, all uh, knob, I don't, understand anything who, what con, what uh, uh, button uh, do it's impossible to understand so sorry but 
<laughs> but I, I but think I, I'm sure that my controller is worse than all uh, <laughs> the other, <laughs> perhaps in, per, in, in performance. But um, for the, um, uh, the, the future of the analog controller, uh, I have uh, I, uh, I, I want to work with uh, someone who, who, who is known in the in Slotka, uh, in Slotka, uh, is um, Philippe Laude uh, from uh, Z Machine. Z Machine uh, built uh, uh, light kits. You know, you know that now. Yeah, we would call him Z Machine, of course. Z Z yeah. Z Machine, Z Machine. <laughs> Sorry. I so think um, NSR have started selling. <laughs> yeah, but NSR have just started selling Z machine stuff. Uh, NSR um, uh, sell uh, Z machine. Um, yeah, uh, the like twenty-four kits. hour yes, kit. Yes, yeah. but um, it's um, uh, um, the owner of Z machine, uh, Philippe Lodé, is a very, um, a very, very uh, good uh, uh, electronician. And um, we certainly uh, work together. Uh, it will, uh, it will change. Sorry, it will change all power uh, module with uh, better components, with uh, perhaps another technology, uh, with no PWM. Uh, he, he work on it, and I we, uh, I I um, build the upper side with uh, the so we will work together and certainly uh, in a couple of months uh, uh, next next uh, next uh, months uh, to make. Uh, a very, very, uh, we hope so, a very good uh, controller, but with uh, a very good uh, power electronic. It will, it will do that better than me. M me, it, it was just for trying if it works only. <laughs> and David, can I ask a question? Yes, of course. When you, when you go forward towards a digital future for that control, so, Where, so, sorry, just, just, just a little, a little slower. Slower. So, Move, please, moving. Please. Yeah, moving forward towards a digital future for your control. Yes. Where will you locate the lane change buttons? Ah. Where? Yes. In the first time, I uh, um, prep. Not previously. Uh, it's. Uh, um, the land change button was just on uh, the uh, it's uh, um, mod uh, menu menu setup setup button and just upper here but yes. but i think it would be better to have the land change on the front side because it's very difficult to uh, to do uh, the land change with one hand, you drive here and you land change. It's not possible. So you, uh, I certainly uh, locate the um, the land change button in the front in the front side. Is it is it okay for for the answer? Yeah. Yes. Definitely. Yes. Thank you. Thank and you very I, much. and that would be my preferred place. On the other hand, in the left hand. In, front. in my case, so, so uh, you, you, you you are left you are left end. So no, I'm I. One one moment. Uh, <laughs> it's easier with video. I hold the control with the like a gun with the right hand, and I would want the lane change in my left hand somewhere. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so, okay. So, my, so, uh, me, so certainly, certainly. For me, coming from I started with Scholastic Digital where the button is like it is on your controller on the back. And so mm -hmm. I got, I, I raised with my right hand. So, you know, I'm, I'm controlling the trigger with this and then I just use my other hand like that on the back. 
So yes, I do the same, Greg. So what yes, I, so if the uh, buttons are on the front, I'd have to kind of yes, hit it uh, do that. Oh, okay. But my, my main question, David, was if that button that you currently have on for mode changing and mode selecting, is that primarily used only for when you first turn it on, when you want to change modes and set parameters? Can that same button be used as a lane changer after you've finished setting your parameters when you're actually racing? Can that same button be used for lane changing? I'm not sure I have understood. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, it's okay. Uh... So, so <laughs> you're showing when you, tr you turn it on, you're, you hold the button and turn it on and you set parameters. Yes? And, and I? On your, on your controller. Yes. You hold the button, turn it on, and then you change parameters. Correct? Yeah, I, 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 I change modes. Uh, oh, I change okay. uh, modes uh, uh, at this moment. At okay. this moment, so, yes. So if that controller were digital and you, had, you, you were able to change modes and, and parameters and things the same way, after you are done changing parameters, and you're going to race, can that button be the lane change button? Um, it's possible. It's possible, yes. Uh, it, it's possible. Um, perhaps uh, for digital system, I will keep only three parameters. And like this, I will use this button uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to have line change. It's, it's uh, all, all, finally, uh, all is possible. Uh, I, can, I, can, uh, I can put uh, uh, at the place of the, of the button, I can uh, put um, a rotation like this one. I can put another, I can put finally five, five um, uh, rota uh, rotation. Uh, but I, I can do all that I want. It, it's fantastic. I, I, I'm uh, I'm surprised myself <laughs> because I have learned how to build that um, uh, thirty years ago <laughs> at school, and uh, I have forgotten all. And I, I remain remind uh, this. Uh, all these things uh, just uh, the last six months. So I, I, I learn uh, every day uh, how to do uh, the, uh, this, uh, this thing. But I don't want to, uh, to, uh, to take all your time. Thank you very much to, to hear me. <laughs> thank, thank you very much for showing that and, and, and answering our questions. And I kind of, yeah. I, I, kind of, I was thinking about this earlier. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> Merci beaucoup. <laughs> but I want you were saying that some other controllers are hard hard for you to use, and I was thinking when when I first saw your new controller, I, I was thinking, well, that's a fantastic controller, and there are going to be lots of people who want that controller because of the visual aspect of of turning the knobs and seeing the line change and everything. Uh, and I was reminded that there are competitors, not not slot it, but other competitors who will say that their controller is better for some reason. And I like that you said you don't think it's the best because no matter how good any controller is, it's only going to be the best controller for some people. Other yes. controllers are going to be the best controller for other people. Yes. I've learned to use the slotted controller. I love the slotted controller. I have a wide variety of other controllers. I keep coming back to the slotted controller. If I can get one of your controllers, I'll probably get one of your controllers. So hopefully someday we'll be able to order the David Kaya controller from, from Z machines or, or wherever. Uh, but it's gonna be great for some people and other controllers would be great for other people. And that's just- Yes, that's yes, a, absolutely, absolutely. And um, the, um, the, the, the philosophy uh, too was um, uh, to adapt the controller to racer and to beginner, uh, to a very good car and very bad car. Uh, and um, uh, uh, controllers like, um, like uh, slotted, uh, slotted uh, um, SCP, uh, I, I know very well this, uh, this controller, is uh, very, very good uh, for uh, good drivers 
and good car. <laughs> but if you are uh, if you have a very bad car, very slightly car, and a very and I I am not a good driver. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's very difficult to adapt the controller to the to the car and your track, of course. Yeah, and, and you know, I I don't find that that's true. I can I can adapt this product controller to pretty much any car on any track, but I've been using it com in competitions for for several years, so I'm used to doing those things. But it just goes to sh it just goes to show for me the product controller is great. For David, his controller is better, and I look forward to other people using his controller and telling us how it is. Do you have any idea when uh, Z machines or you might, are you targeting um, 2021 or maybe 2022 or? Um, it, 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 it will be this year, uh, perhaps uh, this summer. Wow. This summer uh -huh. because because uh, Philippe, uh, Philippe Laudet is very motive, mo motive, mo motivated. 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 Motivated, <laughs> he's very motivated, and um, he will uh, he will um, uh, uh, check uh, check uh, check is good um, the the new power the new power unit uh, perhaps this weekend. So uh, we have we have a, a lot of of. Uh, a thing to do, but uh, but uh, it will uh, it will come. I, I think this summer it, 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 it will be uh, ready. Sorry, that's very exciting. So, so I, I hope, I hope. <laughs> for for uh, it's not my job. It's not my job to uh, to build controllers. It's no, no. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm a woodworker. I, <laughs> so uh, I begin the. I, I have big, began the the work. He, he will uh, finish uh, with a, a, a more professional, uh, more professional uh, product uh, that than I can do uh, by myself. It, it's always been the holy grail for me to be able to see my curve. Yeah. Right. I've always wanted to be able to see my curve, so I'll definitely get one. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm, talk, I'm talking to the guys in my club online at the moment, and they're very, <laughs> they're very, very excited. So uh, I, I, I just sell uh, uh, for, for the moment. I just sell um, uh, very few uh, units. Uh, just to have enough money to continue to develop a, a digital system. Uh, sorry, sorry. So, um, but uh, I, I have a, a, a pre 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 order pre order, pre -order mm -hmm. or pre sell. It's okay. Yep. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, Twenty uh, 20 units, and uh, the uh, no. I have sold it in uh, 24 hours. Yeah, I was gonna say how if they're not uh, only uh, uh, it, it, it was crazy. Uh, uh, I, I I hope I hope uh, just uh, five in <laughs> five five units. So 20 units in 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 40 in uh, 24 hours. It it was a very uh, very uh, impre impressive for me. <laughs> uh, so. uh, it's an okay. Program. Okay. For the controller, uh, perhaps someone has uh, some question uh, about a BLST system. Uh, uh, Greg, uh, if you uh, you are the master, you are the master. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I think we need to make sure everybody has has had the opportunity to ask any controller any questions about the current analog controller. But I certainly want to know more about your plans for your BLST digital system. But does anybody have any other questions about the controller yes, of course. going on? Yeah, just one more. Um, the, how does the controller uh, register the trigger travel? Is it a Hall effect sensor? Is it optical? Is it resistive? It's, um, I don't know if you can see. Okay, yes. Yeah. Uh, Perhaps we Hall see. Hall effect it. sensors. Yes, no, it's not whole effect. Oh. It's uh, optical. Optical. <laughs> yes, um, optical fork. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So 
So you're okay. you're you're breaking oh, well, the uh, light. L l like this, there is uh, there is a light, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you cut the light. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. There so is seven. How many? Yes, there is seven. Uh, seven optical fork. Yeah. But we can um, generate fourteen steps. Uh, and 14, 14 steps is enough to have a very smooth curve uh, for the uh, for okay. the car. Yeah, cool. yeah. And uh, so um, the axis is on two two uh, ball, oh, yes two two ball bearing, mm -hmm. and uh, the spring you can adjust the spring with uh, in uh, changing the screw. Uh, you have several holes. You uh -huh. ch you uh, you change the screw and you uh, tend m more or less the spring. Thank you, thank you. That's great. Thank you very much. <laughs> Any other questions about the uh, analog controller that he's been showing? Hearing none, seeing none. David, I'm interested to know what your plans are for your digital system. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want system. to tell anything, anything or nothing, you know, I'm excited to learn about the future of digital. Um, uh, the, uh, the future digital uh, system is uh, based on a Davic system. Okay. Uh, because it's a French system, uh, it's a very, um, a very um, uh, a strong. And rustical, rustical is okay. Established. Uh, pa, 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 pa. I, I will translate. Does it mean robust? Robust. Uh, or it's very established. It's very. Pro I wonder if it just means rustic. 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 It just means rustic. Yes. Rustic, rustic. Uh, a very rustic system, but very strong. Yeah. And. Um, uh, with this uh, with this controller, uh, finally uh, we can um, have a new step. Uh, I, um, in the U.S. and perhaps uh, in in uh, in Great Britain, uh, there is a, a very few guys who know uh, something about Davic system. I know very little. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very little, yes. So, uh, for example, the curve is uh, right in the ch in the car chip. When you want to change the curve, you have to take the car, put it on um, a computer, change the curve step by step, and rewrite the curve. In the in the car chip, it's very uh, very uh, long to do. It's, yes, it, 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 it's it's very uh, reliable. Reliable. It's very reliable, but it's very long to do. So um, I have talked with uh, David Laurent, uh, who is um, the owner of David System, to to change that. And finally, the the controller. Uh, is built uh, to send directly the good the good speed and directly the good uh, break uh, force. It, it's okay, break force. Yep. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, directly to the chip, uh, like the other system. But um, twenty five years. When the Davic system was invented, uh, it was very difficult to do uh, to do directly this uh, this um, this uh, system. So, uh, with this controller, we can do that. And uh, the, the the very good 
point of David's system is the, reali uh, the reliability, sorry for my accent, <laughs> the reliability, and uh, it, it, it's, it's a very strong system, and uh, there's uh, very, very, very few bugs uh, it's very difficult to, to burn a, uh, to burn a, a car chip, for example. So uh, the the lap timing is very simple. So uh, 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 all the computer can uh, do a very good job with lap timing uh, because there is uh, uh, very few information uh, to uh, to transmit. Uh, I am working with um, with a guy who is um, who is a computer um, uh, uh, software maker uh, who will build a, a very simple, basic uh, lap timer with only uh, the. The, the, the main information, uh, the, the, the last time, uh, the position, uh, the best time, uh, like, like this. And with, uh, with this controller, finally, we can do um, uh, the, the fuel uh, management, uh, the tank uh, weight, with the uh, re re relative speed uh, uh, when you have a, a, a full tank and uh, an empty tank, uh, we can do a lot of things uh, like this. So we, we, want, we want to, um, to uh, uh, make the Davix system younger. <laughs> Bring it into the it, 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 it will arrive with uh, with um, with a wireless uh, wireless uh, uh, controller for six car only, and after for um, uh, twelve car uh, in the first time and uh, uh, how many uh, uh, fifteen uh, cars uh, with a wire, but. For six car, uh, we can do something uh, with a, a wireless system. Yes, uh, I have perhaps. Oh, uh, sorry, I, I, I come back. Yeah. Does anyone know which job on that controller? Does anyone know what? I, I have the wireless track controller, track but uh, I, I don't find. <laughs> sorry. What was it, Wayne? I wonder in which kind of track, which manufacturer of track uh, lane changes will a David chip operate? Uh, David chip um, uh, work with all uh, all uh, plastic uh, tracks uh, lane change. So uh, for the Ninko, for the um, Scalextric, and for the Carrera, Carrera, it, it's okay. It works. Uh, for, for me, in BLST system, I only use uh, manual land change only to uh, enter the pit lane. But I use, uh, I use uh, uh, a handmade uh, line, uh, manual land change, uh, ma a flipper, flipper only. But Davix, Davix system works with all uh, land change, uh, even the SCX. Uh, uh, SCX. SCX, sorry. The SCX, of course, because uh, SCX uh, uh, is very particular. So, and will it, be, will it be a Davix chip or will it be your own chip under your own brand name? Uh, Davix chip. So you're basically working with with David to uh, enhance the David system to to have more support for more for the features that you're talking about. Basically, it's going to be yes, a uh, David version two kind of. Yes, uh, um, I, 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 I work uh, uh, actually. I work with uh, with uh, oxygen system. 
But you're, but the, the but in the future, uh, I, 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 I will uh, I will switch uh, with David system because because uh, um, I will have uh, all the control uh, of the system. Uh, I know very well um, Maurizio Ferrari, uh, but uh, I'm a very, very uh, little uh, customer for him. <laughs> so he, he cannot do all that I want to do. <laughs> it's, it, 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 it's normal, it's normal. Uh, um, I, I have a, a, a big respect for him, uh, but I, I'm, I'm a, a too little uh, customer for him. But as far, as far as what your system will do, what what the what the silage racing silage racing uh, digital or BLST digital, the the thing that you're working on your controller for, that is going to essentially be David updated system, right? Yes, yes. The yes, the the, the, the controller cannot work for other system. Uh, with oxygen, it's not possible because it's uh, um, the wireless control is locked, so it's not possible for for me to uh, to make uh, my controller compatible. Um, uh, uh, yes, uh, I have understand. Thank you. <laughs> and um, so, but but it, it, it's okay. It's not a, it's not a problem. Uh, yeah. No, um, but but uh, no, the the, um, the 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 problem was uh, more on David's system. Uh, who it's if you want now, if you want a David system, uh, you have to wait uh, six months because uh, because uh, David Laurent, the the manufacturer, uh, work only uh, unit by unit, and made perhaps uh, ten uh, systems in uh, in a, uh, a year. So uh, with this technology, with microprocessor, uh, we can uh, do something cheaper and do something easier to build it. So uh, for, 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 the, for the moment, it's for uh, my BLST system, but uh, after perhaps we can, uh, we can uh, sell, uh, we can sell uh, for other system, of course. It's, uh, it's a goal. Well, I definitely- so Do you have a- Go ahead, yeah, I look forward to it. Do, do, you, have a, do you have an in-car chip that's, um, to had the curve parameters, etc., taken away. Do you have a, a, a prototype chip, and how big is it? Uh, the the uh, no no not 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 just uh, not just there, uh, but uh, you can uh, you can uh, buy uh, uh, car chip uh, car chip. Sorry. Uh, uh, at the at the shop uh, Casa Slot Racing in France. Casa C A S A Slot Racing. Uh, you have, but the car chip is um, like um, uh, is uh, uh, perhaps uh, uh, less than twelve less than uh, twelve millimeters by ten millimeters. Just, oh, so just it's very small. small. Yes, it's very small, and you don't have uh, all uh, all effects sensor. You don't have uh, LED uh, for lap timing for uh, land change. Uh, the the car chip works only with the pickup from the pickup to mm -hmm. the motor. There is no uh, no other uh, thing like um, uh, sorry uh, like oh yes thank you thank you I, I, I exactly like this. Who works? How does it operate? Works as well. <laughs> it's very good. <laughs> It's very good. It, it, it's uh, it's not the it's not the car chip. It's the land chain chip. Okay, land change. Okay. This one is a bigger. 
So this but is the, if, if you see, if you uh, yes, is the color chip. But uh, perhaps you can you can um, uh, you can show uh, other um, other material. Uh, the third the third one, for example. Sorry, yes, yes, yes. Uh, in Davic, it's the third one. You have Ninko console transmitter kit. Okay, it's very big and very difficult to build. Wow. <laughs> and you only have four four controllers. Wow. If you want more controllers, you have to uh, you have to um, uh, to plug. Uh, other controller with another uh, another uh, big box like this. It's very uh, very difficult to build uh, for for this moment. I'm working for a 12 a 12 uh, wire uh, car um, uh, black box with uh, only like this. So uh, we can do. Uh, we have. Uh, uh, we have to to make this very good system younger uh, to uh, make a jump in the twenty the twenty first century because uh, because it, it, it was very very old it was the first one it was the first one okay uh, but but there's a, 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 it, 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 uh, it has a, a lot of quality and uh, well, well Dave, David you've come you've come a long way from something like this. Uh, Bell competition controller. What? What it is? <laughs> oh, I don't know. The, the I don't puck. know this. Right. That's the one that's like a puck. That's um, right. Yeah, it actually uses parts from, um, I guess, old automotive um, uh, ignition systems. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, with two wires, with two wires, you can play like this. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, I, I look forward to more news about the improvements in the Davic system. And, and yeah, you know, like you said, it's been around for such a long time that the and the original technology has not changed in this entire time, really, has it? It's been the same Davic for. 25 years up until yeah. now you're talking about thank you it, it, it was a, it was a, a real pleasure to uh, to to talk to you uh, today <laughs> a real pleasure well hopefully you can come back in future meetings and, and yes. share your progress yes because the, the, the hour is very good uh, now <laughs> <laughs> well, we do we do every other week we do this time and then next week we do later and then every other yeah, week okay. so it's like early okay. late early late early late okay all right, does anybody help? Jeremy, you have a question for David or you have something else? No, same question. If, if um, I think you saw that your analog uh, controller is very popular, will you keep making the analog controller? Because maybe that will make you a rich man. I think that's what he's gonna let Z machines do is, is they're gonna be producing larger numbers of the analog controller. Uh, right? um, it will, uh, um, he, he hope he hope uh, to build uh, perhaps we don't know uh, we don't uh, we, we don't know we hope uh, to build uh, uh, a five uh, five hundred controller uh, a year. Uh, uh, yeah. the, 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 uh, he, he can he can he can manufacture manufacture uh, this this um, this scale from uh, uh, until until uh, this car but it will uh, it will uh, be for manually manually manufacture but yeah. so he's if, so he's going to build if, them himself if it's very good we can do we can uh, he, he, he can do uh, this uh, this kind and we we have uh, the uh, we works with um, with uh, a true speed uh, shell, so we have to to for 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 the mo for the moment uh, uh, true speed is okay to sell shell to us, but in the future we don't know. 
So I think I'll, I'll kind of re-answer the question for you, Jeremy. Uh, he made 20 controllers himself specifically to learn how to design a controller and to kind of get some startup money for his digital progress. And he's then allowing uh, Z machines to make the controller. They're planning to make 500 units per year contingent on the ability for TrueSpeed to continue supplying the shells for that new controller. As far as the future holds, we don't know. But 500 units a year, I think, gives us a good opportunity to buy, buy controllers. So I look forward to getting purchase information for that controller. Because <laughs> I was not surprised when you said that the 20, 20 units that you were planning to make by hand sold in 24 hours. That I expected that. And I would have been more surprised if you said that you still needed to sell some because I was, I was ready to buy. Half of the guys on here were ready to buy. <laughs> David, will, will I get it. David, will I so, get priority if it's delivered to a French address? <laughs> <laughs> I'm visiting two friends in France this year, so <laughs> you see, you, you you see how how my my English is poor <laughs> and bad. So with French speaker, it, it's more easy. It's easier for me. <laughs> All right, Martin, you need to hook me up so with that French. I, I have I have customer in uh, in. Um, uh, Belgique, Belgique uh, with a French Belgique is very easy, uh, and uh, Germany too. But uh, but I, I will perhaps uh, stop for the moment for the for this moment to to sell my own controllers uh, to uh, to transfer uh, the the building. Uh, uh, to uh, um, a professional manufacturer like uh, the machine. It's, it's better for the quality. <laughs> and better for us, because that means we can get one. <laughs> it's better for us, <laughs> for you, of course. All right, does anybody have any other questions for Dave? David, anybody? Okay, so we've got about 20 minutes left. Does anybody have anything else that they thought of they want to show? Anybody who was looking for pictures earlier find the pictures they wanted to show? Or should I dig into my topic? Well, O oh, topics. I guess I'm going to Let's be... have a topic. All right, let's see what well, I... He hasn't been in the bin for several weeks. It's been yeah. a while. <laughs> so let's see here. Da, 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 da. Does anybody have any recommendations for a good variable voltage, variable amperage power supply? This person was specifically asking for Carrera Digital. I don't use, I mean, I have Carrera Digital, but uh, I just use the stock power supply. Does anybody who uses Carrera Digital out there have an answer for that? Ding, 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 ding. I'm going to go with no. Uh, but just kind of a general recommendation, as long as it, it's a fairly- well, for, for, for analog, I, I'd recommend like a pyramid variable voltage. Yeah. That is what I was going to say. Yeah, that was going to say that's probably the most popular brand as far as variable voltage, good quality power supplies go. I have three pyramids total. My, my first one was a fixed volt. I forget how many amps it was. And then I got another fixed volt, lower amps that I use for lights and things. And then I got the variable voltage uh, one that I use for, for the actual racing. Later on, I got one of those Chinesium, I don't even remember the brands, you know, just kind of a bench power supply that was variable from zero to 30 volts and zero to 10 amps with both macro and micro tuning knobs for both. And I'm gonna say, you know, I, I love my pyramid. It's a, it's a rock of Gibraltar. There you go, Martin, something like that. But what I don't like about the pyramid is that there's one knob and it's basically a macro voltage control and getting the right voltage is I, I added a little LED DC voltage display just so I could get a more accurate voltage reading. And then you get, it's really hard to get the voltage that you want. So that's the only reason that I would maybe steer people towards other options. The, 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 the technology is old enough that even the cheap Chinesium stuff is good enough for slot cars. And if you've got, you know, nice seven segment displays that show you exactly how many volts and amps you're using, you got nice knobs that controls, 
you know, exactly, you know, tweak exactly the setting you want. Petrucci's, what do you got there, Petrucci? I haven't seen that one very much. It's a power supply that I bought of armchair of racers in Australia. Can you see it? Well, it's about moving it around. <laughs> You're less a little, Petrucci. It's 40 volts. Okay, so it's got the needles, yeah, and it's got one dial for voltage. Yeah, and one so that, dial frame. That's basically a power. That's basically what the pyramid is, except in a smaller box and probably with less uh, air cooling and and stuff like that. It's got a fan. It it does the job, right? It certainly does. Just as an aside, as he's uh, as the question came from a digital user, does he not have to be careful about how low he goes with the voltage, otherwise the system may stop functioning? Yeah, I mean that's that's true for pretty much any digital system that uses the that uses a power base that connects to the track control, uh, and even stuff like Oxygen or Scorpius Wireless, they're going to have a minimum functional voltage. Uh, you also, for Carrera and Scholastic and stuff, you also don't want to go above recommended voltage. Yeah. Because not only does it make the cars hard to control, but you might exceed the voltage of the electronics and blow something out. What worries me too is um, with Carrera, the, the uh, 124 scale cars run on 18 volts, right? Yeah. And the 132nd scale cars run on 14. But yep. is it the same? But it's the same power base. It's just a different power supply that applies to it. Yep. So at least there, you're probably you're probably okay um, going up to at least 18 volts, regardless of what size cars on the track. But I would think that uh, you know anything more than that would be a problem. And I think uh, you're probably right. If you go down too low, maybe things are not going to work. Well, I've asked on the forum what the uh, what what's the lowest voltage that an arc air will still function on because I've bought a, a, a transform power supply uh, variable voltage and, and at the moment I've only ever used the arc air on its wall walk which I think is about sixteen volt um, and I'm told that it may work down to about eleven and if anything below that and it may just stop. Well, if no damage. About, are you talking about the arc air or the arc one? No, okay. I've got okay. Yeah, so that is what I have found with regards to the Skelectric bases in general. 11, it's pretty okay, but if you go, you know, 10.9, it's going to brown out. It's just going to, it's just going to go meh. Yeah. It's not going to damage anything, but you but things won't work correctly. More importantly, yeah. for the digital users, you know, Arc Bros, APB, all the, you know, digital stuff with lane changers is that the lane changers aren't quite so snappy if you lower the voltage too much. You might be able to lower the voltage to 11 volts, but if you don't have good power taps and you know power continuity around your track, your lane changers might not have the volts they need to properly lane change reliably. So that's that's one of the reasons I split my power into two two channels. I got one that powers the the base and the rails, and then another one that powers the lane changers so that I can so that I can turn down the power to the base and have lower power on the rails, but still have good power straight to the lane changers. In fact, the lane changers don't get their power from the rails anymore. They're, they're disconnected from the rails. And, and that was something that we did a long time ago when the, when the original Skelectric digital power base was really poor as far as its power output. And so too many, power, too many lane changers and stuff would actually cause the thing to stop working. <laughs> With Skelectric Digital, as far as voltage is concerned, uh, 16 is, is going to be your upper limit. So a pyramid doesn't go beyond 14.9, 14.8 anyway. So that's perfectly safe for a Skelectric Digital. Uh, for Carrera Digital, it, since the D124 power supplies are 18 volts, like Dennis was saying, since we're talking about toys and they're not regulated power supplies, sometimes they'll output more than their than their rated voltage, right? So an 18 volt, 18 volt power supply might actually turn out 18 and a half or 19, right? <clears throat> Just cause. So I can almost guarantee that the electronics in the, in the control base are gonna be fine with 19 volts, probably even 20 volts. I would not recommend that anybody does that because damn, but also 
you might, you know, you, sh you shouldn't need to go beyond 18 uh, in the first place, but probably okay. But for Scholastic Digital, I'd say don't go past 16. For Carrera Digital, don't, don't go past 18. I don't know what the lower limit is on Carrera Digital, like, like 11 volts for Scholastic Digital. I'm assuming that all the digital systems have their upper range and, and lower range. But the nice thing about digital is that you can then use other manipulation things to, to make the cars easier, like the throttle curves that we were talking about, or with Carrera power levels and brake levels and stuff like that to make cars easier to manage uh, with, your air, with your arc air, because the air is controlling it and it's wireless. You can use the same throttle curve that the digital guys use, you know, through the Skeletric Air app, Arc app, or the Magic Arc app has all those throttle throttle curves in there. So there's not a whole lot of reason to change the voltage. The reason I asked if it was Air versus One is because <clears throat> the One is basically just the cheesiest power and controllers, but it's got the good lap timing, Bluetooth lap timing system in it. So what a lot of people do is unplug the wires that go from the air to the rails because they're just on plugs in the board. You can actually just open it up and unplug it. You haven't damaged or cut anything. Just unplug the connectors and then use whatever power you want for your actual car control because the ARC-1 never had any car control manipulation in the race management software anyways. It was just straight, you know, analog car control with a, with a, with a cool Bluetooth-based lap counting system sharing the same piece of track right so you can just unplug the the cheesy analog power use your sport base or your club controllers or, or whatever and then the arc air uh, arc one is just a lap counter you know that you that you then have on your thing so anybody out there using an arc one who doesn't like those chintzy little controllers toss them unplug the unplug the power thing and run whatever analog control you used to have you know what happens to me is that the children go in the attic without me sometimes and they don't take a tablet and they don't <laughs> uh, they don't i mean one of them doesn't even read yet but uh, they don't bother to set the uh, throttle curves or choke limits or anything like that they'll just switch the wall wart on and the track's live and they'll go around at 16 volts and of course that's not how i use it for them when i use it for the for, for the children i turn them down but they go up there and they get the shock of their lives and start breaking cars. And start breaking your cars. Man. Yep. Yeah. Put, put daddy's cars up on a high shelf. And That's right. Car, put their cars yeah. down on a low shelf. Take the magnets out so that they're just buzzing around and, and when they crash, it doesn't kill. I like, I, like I like racing non-magnet against my son with a magnet in. There you go. Yeah, that too. Yeah. And their, their cars will have no mirrors or wings, but they've only got one or two cars that they can smash up. Daddy's cars are up on the high shelf. <laughs> and yeah. a couple of diodes or resistors or something in the lead wires inside the car to slow the car down. That's true. You can well, make I've, actually, I've actually built a, a plastic box with an array of those on, an, on a clicky switch. So there's, um, yeah. you can turn it down. Mm -hmm. That's strictly analog, though. That doesn't work with my arc air. Yeah. True. That's why so I was I thinking about putting them in the car. I could show people. This is quite a good one I got, the Fusion unit. It's got everything you need. They retail at about forty-five pounds. It's quite quite useful. Got all the banana plugs you need. Because I'm not a home racer kind of guy, so I don't need its power track. But I can uh, plug in my SCP. That just works fine. And then in the uh, the other slot, I can plug in tire drawer. Right away. Not really, just a, a basic power up track ah, for, oh yeah. for oxygen. So oh yeah. I can drop a oxygen car on here and I can use this to configure cars. Uh, this thing's quite good. It's a 200 watt power supply. Because they're two separate supplies, I don't find that the, uh, the controller interferes with what's going on on the track piece here. Uh, and it's just been a really good solid functional power supply. So you know, if anybody needs one of those, something like that, I don't know if you could run a complete track on it but 200 watts seems pretty good uh it's adjustable and it's also got um, amp limits on it as well so if you want to limit the draw from the car quite good when i'm using it to say true tires that kind of thing um it's uh, is that a fusion thing. is that a fusion make yes 
yeah, that, that's the kind I use, yeah. Very good. And I've had no faults with that or no reason to complain. No, nothing at all. Looks good. How much did that go for? A little 45 quid I paid for mine, but that was uh, some time ago. That's what Alan said, pounds. 45. Yeah. That's not bad. It, it's, it's really good. Who's selling them, Martin? Um, slot it. Pendle. I got mine from Slot it. Right, get them for 40 pounds off eBay, Pendles, Martin, I got mine from. Okay, I thought, I thought that's what you meant. Yeah, yeah, right. sorry. Martin, can I ask a question? You've got a banner, a poster on your wall. Uh, Scale Electric, car number eight in red. Yeah. That was on the box lid of my first Scale Electric set. Do you I'm know what set? Which... Was yeah. it set 90? I think it might be written on it. I've got to look for you, or set 60. It, I'm not sure which it, which it was. Oh, my God. It's so big. When he, when he walked away. They, yeah. They all say that, mate. <laughs> <laughs> when you walked towards it, it grew. It, it grew in size. You, you know, you gave it scale and it grew. It grew. I'm, only, I'm only three foot six. <laughs> <laughs> Does it not say what set number it is? It doesn't, I'm afraid. Wait, no. It's a, it's okay. a reprint from 2003. Yeah, I, that was on the lid of my first scale electric box, which is long, long gone. And I'm not sure whether it was on set 60 or set 90. I, I think if you go and look on eBay for reproduction uh, box art, it, it'll actually tell you each set. Yeah, okay. You, you, will, you will sort of find it eventually. The information is out there, yeah. yeah. It's yeah, yeah. Sorry, but the, the, the old scale electric sets were numbered? Uh, like, was that because of issue or size? Size. size. Yeah. Huh. And which cars they had in, I believe, maybe? I don't know. I'm no authority on that matter. Kind of like the Meccano sets were also numbered by yeah. size and how many pieces were inside them. Didn't, and how didn't many they screws the same, and nuts and bolts you could lose. Didn't they use the same uh, box for various sets? I, I think back the then, all sets. those boxes were all, they had different artworks on different sets. I'm not sure, I'm not certain. Like I said, I'm no authority, but I've yeah, got they, a feeling they, they, that they, there are several. Yeah, I do remember. I had the one with the two BRMs, or the BRM and a Cooper in it, and a different one the one my mate across the road had. So, yeah. It was like, but there was a two lane size box and a four lane size box and a super size box, wasn't there? Mm. I have a show and tell. All right, go ahead. Uh, new car, uh, made for a category that runs at North Wales Slot Car Club that I've not yet entered. And it's nothing special, but it's a it's a SCX Audi A5. Nice. I, I've got is, that. It's one of the prettiest SCXs ever made. Beautiful. Well, it, it does seem that if you want to be competitive with an SCX DTM, which is the name for the category, then you probably want the A5. And uh, I've taken the body shell off while we've been discussing, and I've discovered... It's got circuitry in it for working to head and tail lights. Yep. And it looks like these two prongs here sit down on the rails that sit exist in the car. Uh -huh. So That's and it's, like got a little motor, it? it's got it's got a little motor pod which has got a little bit of a rock in it that allows it to. Yeah. That, that, yeah, that, that lighting system was kind of standard for SCX for a long time. Yeah, well, yeah. it's my it's my first ever. I've never I've never even had one in my hands, and the motor the motor's got these metallic tabs, which the sit same on ones as the as the body, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's right. It's, similar, it's, very similar. I, I don't know. Maybe maybe you guys know better than that. But is it that the Spaniards just don't like wires, or or what is it? I don't know. It looks over complicated to me. Yeah, it's partly for reliability, I think, with kids and so on. So there's no wires to break. Uh, but I've never big, I've never seen this motor. Oh, that's the big honking SCX motor, yeah. It's, it's, is it an RK? It's, it's RX81, I think, isn't it? I don't, know, I don't know what they're called. What they're called. It's got an RX is, number on uh, it somewhere. It's the first car I've ever had. You won't see yeah. it from there. Oh, yeah, you can't see anything in the underneath. You'd have to pop it up, but it's is not a, a it's not one there? of the it's not one of the original RXs because they had a they had a, just a single rectangular hole. 
looks like it's got open brush gear, although I can't see anywhere any brush hoods or brushes. I can only, I can only I think it's the RK see module, but it's yeah, about it well 18, RK, 19 yeah, it's not RX. I've seen them going. They're not extremely quick, but then again, the car might be quite weighty too. The motor gets faster while it warms up. Does it? They stick, they stick to the track well. Do they? Well, they do. I've seen them bimbling around and against. They're not fast. Uh, no, they're, they're not fast, they're but they look like they they look like they run okay. Yeah, yeah. That's the, the first car I've ever had with the uh, independent front axles. Yeah, yeah. The only problem I've had is when them if I've had a couple where the motors blow. Okay. And they come with uh, the plastic bit on the front of the yes, motor. The end bell. In various sizes. Do they? So it's it's hard to get a replacement. Ah, okay. I think the one thing I remember from mine was to adjust body rock those uh, those side splitters, the barge boards yes. in effect. They, they sort of bind a bit. I mean, you got you got to do a little bit of file in there. Well, I've got to work all that out. I can see that inside the body shell there's a pair of um, oh, posts. Yeah, the, the legs. Actual, uh, yeah, they to hold the axles one. down, aren't they? Yeah, I don't know if they're visible to you, but there's a yeah, there they are, those. a pair of legs that sit on the hill, uh, sit on the um, bearing bush, bushes. Bearings, yeah. Those are going to get some attention, I think, quite early on. Don't take um, off too much. I mean, I I took off too much of those, and I had too much pod motion, and had to put tape on the pod just to keep it from not rolling too much. Oh, so it rolls too much, and suddenly the side of the car is on the track. Yeah. Yeah, it was terrible. Okay. What I do with SEX, I change the chassis. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm not allowed. Not going to be allowed to do that because my club runs these things very, very, oh, very I close see. to stock. Uh, they will allow a tire change to a uh, uh, slotted N22, and yeah. I think that's about it for this car. I think it's got I, an intriguing. Um, it's got an intriguing sprung guide which goes up and down. I've never, I've never had a car that does that. I've got before, quite a few SEX. Yeah. And uh, yeah. what it's that allows. It's quite a bit of wobble. That's, yeah, that's, you're not going to need that in North Wales. It's a, it's a fairly flat track, isn't it? Uh, it's it's flat, but it's three dimensional. It's got hill. Yeah, it ri rises quite a bit, doesn't it? Yes, it does. It's on a built on a slope. So yeah. Anyway, I thought I'd show you. That's that's cool. and that came about because this came up on Facebook Marketplace and about five miles away from me. <laughs> and uh, when I went to purchase it uh, to save distance. I asked why was he selling his car, and he said, "Well, I bought this to take it to North Wales Slot Car Club, and I can't go there because I've got a new job." And I said, "Well, I'm buying that to take it to North Wales Slot Car Club." <laughs> so there you go. I just thought I'd show you. I yeah. like it very well, much. Why, why, why didn't you apparently, talk, Wayne? You should have talked him into being your sponsor and get the car for free. For free? Well, I, I nearly, I almost did. I got it for half price. That's pretty. Uh, apparently, the car won. I've done some research, and the car won the 2013. German Touring Car Championship. So that's why it's been produced. And it's quite bright. I like bright colored cars. I like to be able to see it. I know very well that there will be other ones that are identical. Why, what, part of London, what part of London are you from then? Which part of London? Yeah. I'm part of the part called North Wales. Oh, you're in, <laughs> oh so you're, no, you're in, you live in North Wales. I, I just in North Wales. I'm about 10 miles outside of Chester. Uh, I thought you was London, sorry. Did that come, did that come from my years accent? Years yes, <laughs> that's what I wondered. Never. I don't come from around here. I live around here, but I don't come from around here. I come oh, from the middle of the country. <laughs> so there you go. On to the next one. Wayne, do you have to run the? Um, do you have to run lights in those? Does your club? I, I, to be quite honest, I will have to look at the rules because I haven't looked at them for a year or more. And they're only very basic. And I suspect that the rules will say you run the car standard. And if it doesn't say in our rule set that you can change it, then you can't change it. Okay. And uh, I think the rules are written on the permissions side rather than things that are not permitted. If you like, you're permitted to change the tires. Uh, I think that's all it'll be that okay. and blueprinting. I know yeah, where Chris. I think I know where Chris is going on this. Yeah, I mean, if you don't have to run the lights um, under your body, you've got those two little metal feelers that come down and make yeah. contact with the strips. Yeah, yeah. They really they impede how the body works yeah. and moves yeah. and stuff. So, 
rules are rules. Um, if you don't have the rules, you've got yeah, all I'd that be taking them out in the interior. And yeah, if you can't be taking them out, and if you can't take them out for the rules, if the rules Just don't say that the lights up. have to burn, then bend those legs up so yeah. that they don't touch. <laughs> great, great way to end the two hours. We are at our two hour mark, so I'm going to stop the recording. As always, if you are attending a live chat, we will continue chatting. Uh, so please come and attend a live chat. Uh, and until the next time, we'll wave goodbye. Bye. Bye bye.